Um, this is your professor, Dr. Benjamin Cabrera. I will start my lecture series with the introduction to microbiology. And I hope you study well so that you'll be uh, reviewed, refreshed, and hopefully you'll retain something out of our uh, exposure, your exposure to my subject. And to continue, okay. Always, as, as part of uh, being a student, you should memorize your mission vision and also your the general objectives of why you are studying in our school. And of course, I always start always start your days with prayers and, and start it with a prayer. And of course, you must affirm that microbiology is very easy. You understand it very well. Remember what you learn. And hopefully you'll have fun in learning it. And of course, do not repeat it next semester. You know, repeating it means you'll be kicked out. You will pass the exam and master over the subject, and you will see me in your future of medical education. Okay. In microbiology, we'll be studying four types of cells. Your eukaryotes are exemplified by your algae, protozoa, fungi, and slime molds. And your prokaryotes, which are your bacteria, can either be aerobic or anaerobic. We'll be uh, tackling with drug resistance, that's our transmitted by plasmids and also with spores as are uh, found among bacteria. Yes, are cold, of course, they are called your spore formers, but they form spores uh, during their, um, when the environment is good for them, or later on, if later on, the environment will be, will be harsh, so the spores will be released. And then from it, they will grow again into vegetative forms. Of course, I'll study viruses and prions. And also, okay, so these are our topics later on that will go to our uh, lectures with your uh, microbiology. What you'll be studying in your microbiology, okay, let's start with the cell structure. We we'll start with the, the tools that will help us study microbiology and this organism. First is your light microscope. Uh, the principle of light microscope is that it uses yellow light. With, and the limitation of it would be it will have minimal magnifications. Next would be your bright field microscope. It has two lens. The ocular lens has a uh, magnified time for 10 times and your objective lens can either be magnified 100 times or your or 1000 times 100 times will be your low power field and your high power field is magnified a thousand times and visibility is by contrast and of most of these specimens should be stained and another uh, tool will be your face contrast microscope it improves contrast difference between cells and the surrounding medium in your dark big microscopy, it uses uh, this one. Uh, this type of microscope is used to diagnose uh, the causative agent of syphilis, which is your Treponema pallidum. Your fluorescent microscope it is used to visualize specimens that will fluoresce. Okay? And you use your fluorescent antibody or FA techniques or your and to continue, the next step of microscope is your DIC or your differential interface contrast microscope, which employs a polarizer to produce polarized light. It is used to uh, visualize Einstein cells and reveal their internal structures. And of course, with uh, 
the more detailed microscope would be your electron microscope which has two types your transmission electron microscope or your TEM and your elect uh, scanning electron microscope or your SEM your TEM has many features that is common with the light microscope while your scanning microscope uh, has lower resolving power than the TEM another type of microscope would be your con confocal scanning laser microscope it uses laser light as a source okay okay let's now start studying the cells now we'll start with the uh, eukaryotic cells which are means that it's a, it has true nucleus okay? these are cells with true nucleus okay and wherein your nucleus contains your dna's your cell genome and its nucleus is covered by a nuclear membrane which has selective permeability to, because of their uh, pores and within the nucleus is found your nucleolus which are rich in your RNA and it is the site for your RNA ribosomal RNA synthesis and uh, but, uh, the substance that contains your nucleus will be your cytoplasm and there are some structures that are located important structures that are also located in the cytoplasm one will be your antiplasmic reticulum or your ER it, it is composed of two types your rough and your smooth your rough contains your attached ATS ribosomes and in here they are the major producers of their glycoproteins and they produce new membrane materials that are transported to all the cells while your smooth endoplasmic reticulum contains no ATS and there are site of lipid synthesis and some aspect carbohydrate metabolism and of course there are motility agents organelles that helps the uh, eukaryote move around okay and also your prokaryotes these are your flagella as exemplified by your trichomonas vaginalis and cilia by your palantidium coli next uh, apparatus would be your golgi apparatus which are stock of membranes that functions in concert with your endoplasmic reticulum, which take your own will chemically modify and sort products of your endoplasmic reticulum. And your mitochondria, you have to remember, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell wherein you produce your ATPs. Your lysosomes, these are uh, membrane enclosed sacs, so these are sacs with membranes which contain your digestive enzymes for protein, fats, and polysaccharides. Your peroxisomes are also uh, enclosed in structure with a membrane that produces your hydrogen peroxide, your H2O2. Your catalase uh, are the enzymes that will, de uh, that will uh, degrade your hydrogen peroxide. Now we now proceed to the next type of cell, your prokaryotic cells. Okay. Your prokaryotic cells contain nucleoid, which are not true nuclei. They are just packaged DNA, which the number will depend on the activity or metabolism of the cell. The cytoplasmic structures are like your eukaryotic cells. Your prokaryotic cells has inclusion bodies. That serves as a storage of substances like glycogen. Your pyrophosphate granules or volutin granules or metachromatic granules, uh, these are your cytoplasmic structures which are found in your Corine bacterium. Okay. The cell envelope are very special among your prokaryotic cells. These are complex envelope layers, they, and they differ in composition and they serve as a protection of the organism from the hostile environment such like extreme osmolarity, harsh chemicals, and even antibiotics. Your cell membrane or your cytoplasmic membrane okay, 
uh, what is a uh, unit among prokaryotes that your prokaryote cell membranes doesn't contain any steroids. Okay. Your cell wall okay, can be uh, comp uh, composed of your murine, eucopeptide, or your peptidoglycan. And your peptidoglycan, then there's the high, st the high tensile strength for the cell wall. Okay, and now how do the, we identify this organism? Though? There are several ways. One would, would be your gram staining. So your gram stain is uh, developed by Han Christian Gram. And it's a differential staining procedure. Okay. It reflects the fundamental differences in the cell envelopes of uh, the prokaryotes or the bacteria. Okay. Because there are certain bacteria, like your gram-positive bacteria, that will tend to retain a complex uh, of crystal violet or your purple dye and iodine after a brush wash with alcohol or acetone. So your uh, gram-positive bacteria will cur uh, color purple or blue, okay? while your gram-negative bacteria do not retain the dye. So that's it. That's a difference. Your gram positive retains the dye and your gram negative does not retain the dye. Uh, iodine complex and becomes translucent and they can be counterstained with safranin or the red dye. Thus, they are colored red. So remember, your gram positive will color purple or blue and your gram negative will color red. Okay. Uh, how do we... Aside from the, the staining, there are also special components that are unique to your gram-positive walls. Okay? Your gram-positive cell walls will contain tachoic and tachronic acids. This provides functions relating to elasticity and porosity, tensile strength, and electrostatic properties of the envelope. They also contain polysaccharides. Okay. And for the gram negative, they contain three special components. So remember this one. There are three components that lie outside the peptidoglycan layer. These are three components. Your lipoprotein, your outer membrane, and your lipopolysaccharides. So remember this one. These are the three components of your gram negative cell walls. Your lipoprotein your outer membrane in your lipopolysaccharides. Your outer membrane okay, functions by excluding hydrophobic molecules. Okay. And in so doing, it protects the cell, in the case of enteric bacteria, from the harsh substances like your bile salts. Next, there will be large antibiotic molecule can penetrate the outer membrane relatively slow. Okay? Your large antibiotic molecule will penetrate the outer membrane quite slow. That's why you can develop high antibiotic resistance. Your Pseudomonas aeruginosa are extremely resistant to antibacterial agents. The outer membrane is 100 times less permeable than that of your E. coli. Then, continue. Uh, lipopolysaccharide complex like is a complex glycolipid called your lipid A. So, that's your lipopolysaccharide. You can also have your lipoprotein, which is the most abundant protein in the gram negative cells. And it functions as it is used to stabilize the outer membrane and anchor it to the peptidoglycan layer. And last will be your periplasmic space. This is a membrane that live oligosaccharides and they function in osmoregulation. Okay. Next, this, aside from your gram negative and gram positive, there are also other types of cell that neither or has difficulty in uh, the taking up of dye with the, with the gram uh, staining 
and we call them your acid fast organisms, your acid fast cell wall. Uh, a, a, a very good example of this would be your mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay? Your mycobacterium tuberculosis contains large amounts of waxes, especially your mycolic acid. So always remember this type of fatty acid. This is your mycolic acid which is a hydrophobic structure, okay, resistant to many harsh chemicals like your detergents and strong acids. If a dye is introduced into the cell by heating or treatment with detergents, it cannot be removed by dilute hydrochloric acid as in other bacteria, resulting to its acid fastness. Okay? So the for acid fast cell was the permeability of the cell to hydrophilic molecules is hundred to a thousand fold lower than for E. coli. That's why it is responsible for the slow growth rate of your mycobacteria. Now we discuss the third type of your prokaryote which are the organism that doesn't contain a cell wall. So these are your mycoplasmas because they don't have a cell wall, they don't have a target for uh, antibiotics that will inhibit the cell wall like your penicillin and your cephalosporins. So these are your mycoplasmas and they usually are treated with your macrolides. They just go through the cell membrane and go and hit and uh, disturb the RNA synthesis. And we proceed to the structures that can make a prokaryote move. So it aids in the motility of the prokaryotes. Samples of which will be your flagella and according to the presence of the number of flagella, they can be uh, differentiated as monotricus, a single polar flagellum, lopotricus with multiple polar flagella, and your peritricus, meaning your flagella are distributed all over the entire cells. And your flagella are highly antigenic and they contain your age antigen. Okay, to continue, aside from your flagella, you can also have your pili or your fimbri. So your pili are hairs or your fimbri are fringes. So they can be uh, interchanged. Okay. So your pili or fimbris or your are shorter and finer than flagella and your pili contains adhesins which are located at the tip of the pili and are responsible for the attachment properties. Okay, so so those are your the accessories of a, of cells, flagella or pili. Okay, and now uh, for the grouping of the cell Cells can be grouped according to the uh, uh, formation that uh, forms that will they will tend to to exhibit. Okay, we call a group of cells streptococci if they will be uh, forming chains, or diplococci if they will uh, form pairs. Cubical bundles are called your sarcinae or flat plates. Okay, and your staphylococci are like grape-like clusters. Rads may form pairs or channels, or your bacilli can form pairs or chains, but they do not uh, form a clustering like your staphylococci. Okay, so we're done. So this is just a simple review, a simple lecture. So see you next week. So don't forget to click subscribe and turn on your notification. And please share this lecture to your other classmates or your other friends that may like to learn a simple introduction to microbiology.